still be cool off. Hopefully, not by then. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Mitchell. We'll see you later. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Friday morning perk. Today is Friday, the 26th of March. I cannot believe we are at the end of March. Al, let's get started. Hey. Are you ready? Good relax. <laughs> All right. I love that. Al, uh, for those of you who are new, when we were meeting live at the All Seasons Diner in Eaton Town, Al would get our attention by ringing that bell, and we all knew it meant we had to sit down because the meeting was going to start. So we, uh, you know, we love gave, hearing that bell. Who gave me that bell? Denise Benbrook. You remember her from way I, back when, the Northern Mama Chamber? I don't. She gave that to me when she was working for uh, Affleck. Oh, okay. I I think I came in after her. I don't remember yeah. her. But Denise that's Benbrook. nice to know that it's been that long a tradition. That's wonderful. I remember Denise Benbrook. <laughs> that was back in the IHOP days. Yes. Back in the yes. IHOP days. There you go. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, today's speaker is our very own Matali Vasa, and she's going to be talking about how to spruce up your technology without busting your budget and working with your PPP loans and any other loans that you got uh, because of the pandemic. So, Matali, it's all yours. Actually, wait, before you get started, I forgot to say, I wanted to thank Center State Healthcare System for being today's perk sponsor. Okay, go ahead. Can I share? Yes. Oh, you're not okay. Hold on. Let me I cannot share my I'm screen. I'm sorry. I'm busy letting people in the room. So hold on a second. It's like walking into a gun. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now you got it. Okay. And there we go. So we are right now in the PC phase. Uh, this is something coming up new. What is a PC phase? PC phase is the post COVID modified workplace post pandemic. Uh, we have had a lot of changes in the last year or so. 2020 brought in a lot of uh, new um, aspects to life, how we do business, how we work, where we work, and how we approach people. So the topics that I'm going to work, talk today about is what today's workplace looks like, what a cyber crime looks like, what are the cybersecurity risks and challenges we face today, understand what are the top cybersecurity risks, some of the best IT practices, uh, some basics of cloud solutions, uh, how to work your relief funds towards it, and find the right partner. So what is today's workplace? Today's workplace is people choosing to telework, which means they're working from home using office computer. Telecommuting is one word in that, work, in that space. Secondly, teleworking is making, giving the ability for organizations resources to work from different places. They might, there might be satellite offices or they might be working from home. That's called distributed workplace. You know, people in the same organization, not in the same location, but in different locations. Third thing, bringing and so, uh, some of the non-employee resources bringing in their own uh, computers. It's called BYOD or bring your own device. Uh, a lot of consideration is getting giving being given to business moving to cloud, which is cloud solutions. Then putting all of these together and making sure there is adequate security put in place and understand the whole security concept is what we call is the security policies. Now, all of these are driven by NIST and HIPAA compliance uh, 
protocols. And for IT, IT infrastructure, it is being rolled out by something called cybersecurity framework. And you can, I, you can know more details about it at nist.gov. That's the place where you can uh, get more details. Now, what is a cyber crime? A cyber crime has three parts to it. We normally know the top portion, which is the surface wave, where you have all your Yahoo, Google, Bing, Reddit, and whatnot. Then comes the deep web, where all, most of your content is, you know, your records, your academics, your uh, databases, your legal documents, and everything that whatnot. That goes in the deep web portion. Then comes the dark web portion. That's where your stolen credentials are normally traded or saved or you know um, distributed. Anything that is uh, not legal is done over there in the dark web. So it, one good thing that I recommend all my customers is, do, do you, would you like a dark web scan to see what's there? How many email IDs have been compromised? Things like that. So your stolen credentials are st stolen from dark web and it's used in surface web, which is your browsers and uh, applications to get into the deep web. And it takes about 197 days for you to figure out that your data has been stolen from the deep web because somebody has found a pinhole size of a uh, hole that they can penetrate into your system and get the data. Now it barely takes 19 to 20 minutes to pull your data out of the deep web by any hacker. So that those are your numbers, those are your statistics. Then what are the cybersecurity risks and challenges that we face today? <clears throat> now that's our landscape, that's what we see. You are behind that wall in the fortress. We have a cybersecurity team, we have insider threat where we have our user community clicking on uh, unmentionable links where they shouldn't be instead of checking and then come out creating a pinhole through the firewall. We have a security operation center, which is constantly monitoring the entire internet. And then we have third party vendors who have, you know, not so uh, great softwares, which has a lot of compromised code in there, which, you know, creates a lot of problem. Now, all of this security details is managed by a CISO or a cybersecurity infrastructure security officer. Okay, that's us. Then comes the client organization where we have something called a cybersecurity budget. The problem is that huge of a steam engine which is in the back and the budget is the little toy engine in the front. We are trying to pull all of that so that you're secure. And all of this is constantly managed by two key people, the CISO and the CEO. And that's right there, trying to figure it out. How we can pull that big of a mountainous work using small budget. So we scope out everything from a priority one to a priority 10 basis. Now, understanding your corporate cyber cybersecurity risks. What is the biggest one? The biggest one is the threats that we know, the incidents that we know. The least one is executive threats where impersonation happens. So some CEO's ID get compromised and that is being used to come back to the organization's data. That is something that is least likely to happen, but that still happens. However, the biggest one is the threats and incidents that happens at a surface level where people uses links that they're not supposed to click and they go out. So data loss and threat incidents like viruses, those are the things that are very commonly are very high in numbers still today in the corporate cybersecurity space. Then understanding what are IT securities for best practices purposes. First off, use multi-factor authentication, at least two-factor authentication if possible. Microsoft today is forcing two-factor authentication, not using the cell phone pin, but using the Microsoft's authenticator app. Because even today, your phone can be hacked into or sniffed into and your um, code, the six digit or the eight digit code can be sniffed out. So they are recommending that you use the two-factor authentication. 
don't use same password across multiple files. I mean, websites, you know, you definitely don't want to um, use the same password you use for your email versus your social media versus your financial institutions. Definitely not. That is a big no-no. You don't want to share passwords. I have noticed that, okay, let's just use the same password for all computers, ABC123. Please don't do that. That's the easiest way to you know, get to your machine. And that's the easiest way to get into your data. Anybody can uh, guess that. That's, that's like two combinations, pretty much. A big thing is do not save your passwords to browser. That is another big thing. If you do that, browsers can be sniffed and your passwords can be just taken off right from there. Um, even though Google says that their um, password uh, saving mechanism is safe, Still not recommended. Uh, change your password frequently. A recommendation is every 60 to 90 days is a recommended uh, password change. Please do that because it is going to save a big headache for you. And then follow the guidelines of every website that they say that you should have in your password. Minimum of eight to 12 characters is a big thing. Don't go anything less than eight. Have to have uppercase and lowercase combination. Must be alphanumeric and numeric. And put one special character, one to two special characters in your password. So it's a little challenge to you know, figure out how or where those particular characters are. Those are some of the best practices that I could recommend. Then basics of cloud solution. <clears throat> This is something that we that's getting pushed by Microsoft moving to cloud. You have no option because of the distributed uh, workplace that you have. You're right now in full throttle in cloud, cloud solution. Try to adopt it as much as possible. The reason why we say that is last year in July, there was 44 million daily activity going on in Microsoft Teams. And Microsoft Teams is one of the communication and collaboration tool provided by Microsoft, Office 365. However, by October, that has surpassed close to 155, I believe, my thing is. 115, 115 um, million of daily active users. So that, that's the adoption rate that Microsoft has shown that cloud is the best place to be with a distributed workplace. What are your uh, um, cloud solutions out there? You have Google Workspace or G Suite. Now G Suite has come up to the level of what Microsoft has. So those are your two key places where you can get 99% of your solution needed for your business operations. You have Gmail for your email, whereas you have Exchange for Microsoft. Exchange also covers contacts and calendars. Uh, Google Space gives works, uh, drives whereas um, Microsoft gives OneDrive. Uh, share drives is equivalent to SharePoint. Now, <clears throat> Google Workspace also has something called Google Talk and Google Meet, which is done with Teams. So pretty much both of them have that same set of tools that you can use to operate for your business. However, there is one caveat to it. Cloud's data protection is a shared responsibility. From a data protection perspective, it's more like backing up of data where Microsoft's license specifically says that they are not liable for your data loss. They will back up, but the backup of your data is your responsibility, not theirs. They are backing up based on their infrastructure. They are not liable for your, their data, your data loss and they recommend that you use a third party backup um, company to back up all your cloud data services. And there are a several bunch of them who do that. So here's the division where they talk about, they will be responsible to make sure there is no hardware failure, no software failure. If there is a natural disaster, you are backed up. And if there is any power outage, you're backed up. Meaning if you ever need your data, they, they will, transfer the control onto the, another site where you can still access your data without losing anything. However, where they will not consider doing for you is if you have accidentally deleted a, data, a user and their data, it is not their responsibility to 
pull that for you as a backup. It is your responsibility. So those are the things. So human error, programmatic error, malicious insiders, oh. anybody, excuse me? I think somebody, okay, I'll continue. Um, any malicious insiders, those are the few things that they will not, absolutely not uh, deal with. It is your onus to um, take care of it. So from CMIT, here is our question to you. Are you cloudified enough? Go moving to cloud solutions. Now, Therese mentioned about relief funds and PPP funds that you could use. The round two PPP fund draw will allow you up to 40% towards anything that has to do with operations and a big chunk of it goes towards business software and cloud computing uh, service and facilitates that business opportunities. So if, if you are moving to cloud or if you are go doing a hardware refresh where you're improvising your operations, that is absolutely payable uh, from the 40% funds that you get from the PPP round two. And chances are that they may um, also excuse that. So it could be an upfront expense, but if eventually it is a fund that you get to keep towards your hardware and software refresh or um, software um, changes that you're making towards your operation, business operations. There's a second site called New Jersey Manufacturing Ed Extension Program. Anybody in the manufacturing space or our you know, building space. NJMEP has a lot of programs where you, they will help you to fund a lot of your technology related stuff. So I would strongly recommend that you go to NJMEP website and take a look at all the details that they have towards uh, technology refresh. Now for the PPP funds, you will get more details on my fa Facebook posting that I posted in, um, um, the ch chamber uh, Facebook page on the 23rd of February. So if you would like to refer back for more details, that's the place to go to. <clears throat> now, to help you do all that, you absolutely need the right IT partner. Uh, most of our um, products, they are uh, compatible for NIST compliancy, and these are all managed services. You uh, keep us on a retainer basis something called CMIT Marathon. We do remote monitoring, virus protection, um, any Trojans, those are covered under that. CMIT Guardian is our business disaster recovery, which is the data backup and recovery. Um, we, we, we guarantee that you would be up and running within two to three hours. There will be no data loss. We can even have you up and running in a pseudo site. CMIT Secure is network management for firewalls, routers, APs, anything, APs meaning access points or Wi-Fi. And CMIT anti-spam is the email spam protection or auto threat protection. So, and also email encryption ability. So if you are sending uh, secure data, like social security, any, any sensitive personal information like social security uh, numbers, your um, um, home address, anything sensitive, including any of uh, health records, if, you, if it is getting emailed, you can uh, do email encryption and send it. And when you receive it, you receive it as a secured email, you go into that secured server and download your email. So once we have delivered the email, the onus, be, uh, the onus becomes the responsibility of the recipient to keep it safe. So here is a famous quote given by William H. Webster. He's a former uh, director of FBI. He always said the security is always too much until the day it is never enough. So when you've been hacked, you exactly know how, how well you have been protected. Thank you. Oh, Any questions? Great, Mitali, that was eye-opening. <clears throat> Thank you so much for that. Anybody have any, any questions? Let me get um, I'm, I'll share with the group. I am currently dealing with being hacked as we speak. Um, and the advice, I, my bank account was hacked in November. Oh, it was then hanged, hacked in December. Um, I followed the advice of the bank's fraud department, which was completely erroneous and useless. And now I am hacked again. My bank account is now frozen and I am dealing with this now and it is no fun. 
case. Sorry. Uh, the reason for your bank account being hacked because your credentials were compromised. And the bank told me to change my password and put on all these little options they have, two-stage verification, blah, blah, blah. None of that means anything if your bank account and routing number are already out there in the dark web. And yes. their fraud department didn't tell me that. Oh, they should have shut my account um, down in November when it initially happened and opened a new account and they didn't do it. So now I'm dealing with this. Wow. Um, this is, this is Chris Ann. Uh, that was excellent. I appreciate everything that you imparted to us and I'm sorry for what you are going through. I can only imagine the nightmare it is, but one point I want to make um, that you spoke in such a detailed manner about this, but regarding the passwords, you continue to hear that. And I know that companies will often, larger companies will often make that a mandate. But for people that are working in smaller business, which is all of us, for the most part, um, it's something we have to even trigger, put on agenda. And when you said, make sure you add special characters, that's something we tend not to do. So it's important. And I thought that was a very good point. Thank you. Thank you, Chrisanne. <clears throat> You're welcome. <laughs> Good to have you on today. Anybody else? Oh, good to be here. <laughs> uh, Erica. Natalie, it's Erica. Just a quick question on that chart that you had with the iceberg. Yes. Um, that bottom piece, right? Mm -hmm. That dark web piece. What exactly is that in layman's terms? It is, it is that, uh, it is a trading platform where your credentials are actually traded with a bid and an ask mode, like you have as a as New York Stock Exchanges. Wow. And are so there are like services that are hosted somewhere that are actually doing this. Yes, there isn't are. there a way if you know where this happening to you know? You do. There is no way to get to the underworld. The only thing we can do is protect ourselves to be able to not get there. Today, okay. there, is a, there is a platform called Tor platform, T-O-R. It's a torrent platform where, you know, it's, 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 a, it's almost like a silent auction. You don't get to see it and it still gets auctioned. Mm -hmm. And the bigger the company is, the higher the bids are. Wow. Crazy stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, this it's it's pretty. The only the best thing we can do is uh, put in enough adequate um, uh, plugs put in place so we don't get hacked. Mm -hmm. Again, like I said, you know, it's always too much security until it becomes too little. Where they will right. they will the hackers are. It's like that twenty four seven job, three sixty five days. A year they are doing this year round they don't sleep when you go to sleep is the time when they wake up and start you know a lot of us <clears throat> one of the things in my previous presentations i had given that folks put in a lot of information on facebook hi today is my kid's birthday and uh, he turns 10 years old you just gave out your child's birthday and that is something you use for your uh, passwords. Oh, we celebrate 25 years of our anniversary. Guess what? You just gave away another code for your password. This is my dog, Oscar. You <laughs> gave another code for your password. So I guess the point is to not use personal information as passwords. <laughs> Or not to tell anybody anything about yourself. <laughs> yeah, you have to be cryptic. You cannot be, you cannot give away. We, we so um, unconsciously put up information on social media because we uh, are so eager to share something exciting that we forget that we are giving away a lot of information about yourself. I, I love the people who do those little Facebook post. So what was your first car? You know, the so, hello. And I'll put, do you realize you're just giving out security question information? Hello. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Your first car, your, your, your birth city, your uh, town you lived in, a lot of things just give away. My recommendation is never, ever 
any of your personal information, where you come from, where, which town you live in, you know, if you are not using those, fine. But if you are definitely using those, I would recommend that you shut off, turn off your personal information from there. Change the answers to something completely different. So if you were born in Middletown, change it to Kansas City, Kansas. <laughs> it doesn't have to be the true answer. It just has to be an answer on your security. You just have to remember what you answered. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point, Karen. <laughs> Point. Yeah, and and to and to um, there are tools out there which will keep that information uh, secured for you. And one of the tools is LastPass. Um, it 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 seamlessly works with a lot of uh, applications, although it has its own hiccups. But that is one of the um, softwares we ask our clients to use. LastPass is a, it's a subscription based, so or or you can have it as an app. But that still saves you that headache of having um, to, you know, save it electronically. But I am still old schooled. I still have a little red book where I save mine, and that does not leave my office room. I forget the password when I go to another location. Bad luck. Come back and deal with it. Right. I, I'm from old school too. I use a book as well. Definitely have a book. And, and there are so many categories that I, I must have maybe 50 or 75 different uh, sites or, or applications or, or, or whatever, in business, tennis, piano, family, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, I could be changing passwords all day long. That'd be my, you know, that'd be my full-time job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Heidi went and ran and got her password book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have Flagged it. up, tagged up. Uh, <laughs> I right, right, too. It's right over here, or no one else gets it. <laughs> Heidi, is that just passwords? That's a big book. Hold that up again. That's a big book. I know. I wouldn't recommend anymore. <laughs> right there. <laughs> oh, Heidi has you beat. Look at that. <laughs> Whatever. I have. Uh, I have twenty-four companies. So. Oh, jeez. Yeah. There you go. And every time we fire an employee, we have to change the password. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. I have a question, Mitali. We send a lot of personal information through texting friends and family. How secure is texting? Not secured. Wow. That is not secured. Your your text, if if you are a point of interest, your text will will be somebody will be there, you know, making it a point that they are going to sniff your text messages. There are ways. Yeah. All right. Any other questions from Itali before we go to our next uh, our round of introductions? And if you're raising your hand, I can't see everybody because we have we have oh, 29 people. We had 31 people before. Um, so any other questions, just shout out. Just unmute yourself and ask. Otherwise, we'll move on. OK. All right. Thank you so much, Matali. That was great information. Uh, a lot of stuff I haven't seen before. I really thought you did a great job putting that together. Um, so um, today's uh, perk is sponsored by Center State Healthcare System. We always are grateful to Center State for being big supporters of the chamber. And we're gonna get started with our 30 second commercials. <laughs> 